usually when I list off the fruits of the Holy Spirit, I say love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. I'll put a humility in that eighth spot. However, in the Sunday School curriculum, uh, they have translated and used the word gentleness instead. Uh, so we're using gentleness today as the eighth of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's okay because you'll find that the words gentleness and humility are interchangeable in many places in both the Old and the New Testaments. In the Old Testament, the word that we normally translate as either gentleness or humility is anna, and it simply means to be humble. And in the New Testament, in the Koine Greek, the word that we translate as gentle or humble is epeikos. Uh, and epeikos has an interesting meaning. It usually implies a person who has great power, but who does not use that power to take advantage of anyone else. It has that particular meaning. And as I mentioned when I was reading scripture, those words, either Anna or Apeikes, are often applied to a judge who judges very gently and graciously and lets a person off with a light sentence. It's important to note that in all of those stories about the judges, the judge never lets someone go who is then going to go and hurt other people. Uh, to exercise leniency in that case and to let somebody go on hurting others is simply cowardice, it is not gentleness. But in the case of a sentence imposed upon someone uh, for some crime that has not hurt anyone, if the judge says, look, I forgive you, you may go free, uh, that's gentleness or humility. And that's the beautiful quality that both the Old and the New Testament often ascribe to God. There's all kinds of stories in Scripture about judges who reach a harsh sentence and then say, Oh, just forget it. Uh, you can go free. You are forgiven. Uh, throughout all of the Gospels, Jesus often speaks about God as the great judge who has the Pentecost, great power, but great mercy as well. I read to you this morning from the Old Testament prophet Hosea, one of those stories that for me is extremely powerful and has always moved me. The story of God looking down on his people and saying, I did everything for you. I loved you, I healed you, I cared for you, and what do you do? You go off to the gods of Egypt and Assyria and you ignore me, and then God becomes tremendously angry and says, I will strike your cities, I will send death upon you, I will punish you. But in the very next line, God says, how can I do it? My compassion grows tender. In some translations it says, my heart melts within me and I cannot hurt my creation. And the last line of that expresses what real gentleness is when God says, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come destroy. And I hope you know that though you have sinned and broken the commandments of God and God's judgment upon you rightly should be harsh, God in the person of Jesus Christ says, you are forgiven, I love you, I will not punish you. I'm going to tell you a story here at the end of the sermon, and I know that I've told you this story before, but I love it so much because it will indicate to you how much gentleness has played a part in my life, and even in my decision to be a minister, a story of a great and powerful man 
who was able to show gentleness. It comes from the time when I was about eight years old and my father was a minister and at the anniversary of our church we invited a very powerful and important minister to come and speak at our congregation. Uh, he was the principal of Knox Theological College. And everyone was in awe of him because he was a big man with silver hair and when he preached, he preached with power and with fire. He really was impressive and powerful. Of course, I was terrified of him as a little eight-year-old child. I trembled at the sight of him. And then my parents had the nerve to invite this horrible man to lunch at our house. And as far as I was concerned, it was like inviting Darth Vader into your home. 